Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on Darkstack. I am Dark, and today we're going to be taking a look at the room Subluster on TriHackMe. Subluster is a DNS brute forcing tool. It's uh, GoBuster has a similar mode to what this actually does. This is an, to some extent, this is an open source uh, DNS brute forcing tool where it can find things using Google, Bing, and other search engines uh, that are different subdomains of uh, websites like even try hack me or things like that. Uh, this is a tool that you will use a lot of time in a reconnaissance phase of a penetration test or within bug bounty. Uh, this is a very, very popular tool for that. That being said, let's go ahead and dive right in to task one, the introduction. So reconnaissance, the first step of a pen test is arguably the most important step. Discovering the total attack surface of your target is critical, especially if you're performing phishing and miss a portal that you can use to log in. This is really, really important for phishing as well. Uh, if you miss like a Citrix login that's exposed on the public internet, that's huge. And that's that's a big phishing target for penetration tests. Uh, Subluster is a fantastic Python script that allows us to perform quick and easy recon against our target, discovering various subdomains associated with the websites and domains in scope. Uh, so one really quick disclaimer along with the uh, ASCII logo art that comes up when you run Subluster, there is a chance that your ISP isn't going to like this activity. Um, I do actually have a downloadable copy of, of results from this, so you don't actually have to run this. Um, usually you will not get in trouble for this. I've put this here just as something that sometimes it happens. It's very, very rare. Um, this is done because it's an automated uh, amount of traffic. It is a lot of traffic very quickly. Uh, Google will actually rate limit you for a little bit if you do this too much because they don't want to have people just brute forcing a bunch of skins that ends up becoming ultimately a denial of service. So just to reiterate, I have a downloadable copy in the last task for the task that you actually need it of results from this. You don't have to run this. You probably won't get in trouble for running it. I do recommend still trying it, but... Uh, just a quick forewarning. Uh, so we can find Sublister here. This is the GitHub page, and we're gonna go ahead, I'll make this a little bit bigger, and we'll copy that, and we just have to install it. I've gone ahead and made a directory already for Sublister in my TryHackMe rooms. I'm actually gonna launch a new Tmux session, and we'll close that, and we're gonna do a git clone, and then we'll paste that here, and we'll give it just a second to download. Changing into the sublister directory, we can see that we have a requirements.txt as well as a setup.py. Let's take a look at that readme though. And installation. So we can see that our installation on Linux is just going to be sudo pip install dash r requirements.txt. We'll do that really quick. I'm going to do pip3 to force it to use Python 3 for this installation. Uh, that is because this tool is in Python 3 install-r requirements.txt. Note I am within the sublister directory for this and you can see that I've already got this installed. It's actually in my op directory as well. And then we'll go ahead, we'll flip back over and we can close that and we'll mark task one as completed and jump into task two, which is gonna be the installation. So the GitHub repository for that, again, it can be found there. Uh, this is very, very easy. Um, and I actually walked through the steps here of installing it in your op directory. Uh, you can do the same step that I did uh, beforehand. Make sure you have uh, sudo before this if you're running it as your non-root user, though. We'll mark this as completed since we've gone ahead and already done this. And then we'll change into task three, which is going to be switch forward and talking about the various settings that we have within it. Sublister has a number of switches that we can use to do anything or everything from setting our target domain to changing which engine we use for searching. And this does matter. You're going to find different results for different uh, search engines. For example, if you use Google and then switch over to Bing, you will find different results because of what they have filtered out. You can access this via running Subluster with only the help switch, so dash H. The first question here is going to be what switch can we use to set our target domain to perform recon on? So we'll go ahead and switch back over. I'm going to do Python 3 Sublister. Let's see, ls, python, 3, and it's lowercase. There we go, dash h. And let's see, 
What switch can we use to set our target domain to perform recon on? It is going to be this first one, dash D. How about setting which search engine we'll use for searching? That is going to be dash E for engines. And again, that does matter. Saving our output is important, so we don't want to run recon again. Or we don't have to run recon again, but we can return to our uh, review our returns and review them at any time. Uh, what switch do we use to define an output file? That is going to be dash O. That's the traditional output file. Sublister can sometimes uh, it can take some time to run, but we can speed this up through the use of threads. Which switch allows us to use threads? This should be dash T. And that's just a common one for threading. And then last but not least, we can also brute force the domains for our target. This isn't always the most useful. However, it can sometimes find a key domain that we might have missed. What switch allows us to turn on brute forcing? As you might have guessed, this is going to be dash B. All right, let's go ahead and jump into task four, which is going to be scans away. And we're actually going to do some light scanning with sublister. Time to scan. Let's run sublister against a target company domain and learn about some common domains. You can also run this tool via the recon uh, at dnsdumpster.com, or you can just download my uh, results from here. In this case, I will demonstrate it against NBC just using my Kali uh, box down here. This is very, very uh, easy to run anyways. So we'll mark that first one as complete and then we're actually gonna run this command. So it's gonna be Python3 sublister dash P or dot PY and then the domain of NBC.com and then dash O to save our output. So we'll copy that, clear the terminal and then we'll paste that in and we'll give it just a moment and you can see that this is because I don't believe I have an API key in for virus total. Uh, but we'll give it just a moment to run. Once that completes, open up your results and take a look through them. Email domains are almost always interesting having a typical email portal, uh, usually Outlook, located at them. Which subdomain is likely an email portal? Now, we'll see this in a moment, but it should be mail. And there we go. We can see we have our output here. Let's see if it actually showed up. And we can see we have a lot of domains returned. This is pretty common to see a lot of these come back, especially for a big company like NBC. And you can see that there are a lot of domains. And there's probably a lot in here that hasn't been updated, especially recently, that would be a good target for bug bounty, uh, specifically if NBC has a bug bounty that includes these within their scope. This is one that I think we're going to revisit here in a little bit with another one of the questions, but 30rock.mbc.com is one that specifically stands out to me as something that it might not have received a penetration test recently because that's kind of an older show. So if we go back here, administrative control panel should never be exposed to the internet. Which subdomain is exposed that shouldn't be? Should be an admin domain. And we can see there's an admin MX and there's a whole bunch of domains in here, but you're ultimately gonna see the admin domain. And these results can change over time just depending on what is actually exposed and what the results find. If your results are not showing that admin, which it looks like mine are not at this current time, just grab the results from up here and it's a little bit easier. That way it's more consistent with what I have. Company blogs can sometimes reveal information about internal activities. Uh, this can a lot of times also reveal what programming languages or maybe current projects and other things like that that are going on inside the company. Which subdomain has the company blog edit? That's going to be blog. Very straightforward, and that's a very common subdomain to find for different websites. Development sites are often vulnerable to the uh, to information disclosure or full-blown attacks. Two developer sites are exposed, one of which is uh, which one is associated directly with web development. And it's like the development. Uh, da, 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 let's see what we got. Looks like there's a dev www there. And it looks like we're actually getting more results than when I originally ran this at this time. And it's just probably new domains that they've registered. Or new subdomains, rather, that they've uh, registered and set up. Customer and employee help desk portals often reveal internal nomenclature and other potentially sensitive information. Which DNS record might be a help desk portal? This one is likely going to be the help. And again, this is something that shouldn't be exposed externally. Sometimes it can be a client help 
or a customer help portal, but it just really depends and you can see it right there. Single sign-on is a feature commonly used in corporate domains, which DNS record is associated with this feature. Include both uh, parts of the subdomain separated by a period. We can take a look at the hint here. It's often shortened to SSO, which is something that you will see more in production environments, especially if you are working as an IT, or in an IT department rather. But if we scroll through here, should see it and not terribly long. Otherwise, we can also grab it from my canned results. There we go, SSO login. And that's something that we would want to target. Let's see, they wanted, uh, oh, www. Let's see if that's what we need. Hold on, we'll be right back. All right, and we're looking at it. It is gonna be the one down here at the bottom. It is the SSO login.stg. And we can go ahead and add that in here. It's because, and not STB, STG, comes before the NBC bits. And then one last one for fun, NBC produced a popular sitcom about a typical office environment, which DNS record might be associated with the show. And we can look through, and that's likely going to be related to the office. And if we look through that for things like that, we can find a record that's called office-words. And this might be associated with the office. It's something that, again, it, uh, it may be an older domain because that show has, it's still running reruns, but it's not being actively produced. So that's something that we might want to investigate further. But again, we're looking for things like login portals or maybe just poorly maintained sites that we want to go back through and take a look at. But we can take that and do office words. And it looks like it took it because of regex, but it should be office words. And otherwise, that's going to do it. Uh, we've gone ahead and completed this. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask either in the Try Hack Me Discord, which is linked below, as well as the DarkSec Discord. And I will see you guys next time.